Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru and I've got another product shootout for you here on the channel today. This time around, I'm checking out all-in-one liquid CPU coolers, but this shootout's gonna be a little bit different from others I've conducted on the channel because I have two contenders from the same company, Deepcool. Inside my test rig right now is the Castle 280EX and sitting next to me is the Castle 360EX. So of course, Deepcool's already won, no point in continuing the shootout, right? Wrong. There actually is a method to my madness and the inspiration for this video came from you, my viewers, who have often asked me, what's better, a 280 millimeter cooler or a 360 millimeter cooler? I was never able to answer this question because honestly, I'd never tested two coolers that were identical in design except for the radiator and fan dimensions. Well, that's what we have on the bench today. These two coolers are identical in every way. I've confirmed this with Deepcool. They have the same radiator design, the same pump design, same hoses, the same fan blade design. The only difference is that the fans, of course, are different size, and we have three of them on this cooler and two on this cooler, and then the radiator dimensions are overall slightly different, with the 360 having a total area that's 10% larger than the 280. So you may say, well, the 360 is gonna win, right? Well, in my fan shootouts, I've definitely found that 140 millimeter fans have an overall advantage versus 120 millimeter fans. So the 240 millimeter fans on the 280 cooler may actually outperform the 320 millimeter fans on the 360 cooler. So really, I don't know which is going to win, but I'm very interested in the results. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at the two contenders I have on the bench. First up is the Castle 280EX, installed in the front of my Be Quiet Purebase 500DX chassis. It of course has a 280 millimeter radiator with dual 140 millimeter fans that span the full width of this chassis, and that does have a drawback that I'll discuss in a moment. Here's the Castle 360EX, which of course has a 360 millimeter radiator that takes up the full radiator bay, and three 120 millimeter fans that span the case from top to bottom. Now, as I mentioned, there is a drawback to mounting a 280 millimeter radiator in this case and any case, namely the narrower fan mounts for 120 millimeter fans will actually get in the way of the airflow of a larger 140 millimeter fan, as you can see here. As for my test bench, it consisted of a Ryzen 9 3900X 12 core locked at 4.2 gigahertz running at 1.3 volts under load. All benchmarks were run with the case fans set to their minimum RPM of 350. The fan filter was in place and the front panel was attached with a microphone set just to the side and six inches away. All right, now that we've covered the setup, let's get into those benchmarks. First up, we have the idle benchmark. I know there's not much here, but it actually tells us a whole lot. First of all, the 280EX and 360EX both hit 35 decibels at minimum RPM. And that's despite the fact that they have different numbers of fans, different size fans, and that their minimum RPMs are really different and 35 decibels is very quiet. And that's great news for anyone who wants to manually tune their fan curves to keep their PC silent, except under load. All right, now I'm gonna hit you with a ton of information. In this graph, you're going to see the 40 decibel noise normalized result, the 50 decibel noise normalized result, as well as the maximum RPM result with the decibels noted. Now, looking at these numbers, they're very close. And again, that's gonna be the theme of this test, that these 280 and 360 millimeter coolers are really closely matched. Now at maximum RPM, the 280EX did get a little bit ahead, but it's also at 58 decibels versus 55 for the 360EX. And really either of these is deafening, but 58 decibels is terribly loud. You'd never wanna use it even with headphones. What you should be taking away from this graph is that you're gonna to wanna to cap these coolers at 50 decibels because the results are nearly identical and yet it's a whole lot quieter. Now, keep in mind I'm running CPU-Z here, which is a heavy load, but it's not a really insane load. I find it is a really good approximation for a game engine. So if you're a gamer, this is the graph that you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to in terms of CPU temperatures. But if you wanna see maximum temperatures, let's turn to my Cinebench graphs. Here, my Ryzen 9 3900X locked at 4.2 gigahertz is pulling 154 watts, and that's just the CPU load. The load at the wall was 223 watts. This is actually such a huge power draw that it beats Prime 95, which so many people still use as a stress test. Well, Cinebench R20 is a whole lot more stressful than that. On average, the temps are four degrees higher than they were in CPU-Z, so this is the range that you're gonna deal with, and yet still, I suggest you do not use the maximum RPM settings on these coolers or any coolers. Look at the results at 50 decibels versus the 58 and 55 decibel. They're virtually identical, and even at a very, very quiet 40 decibels, 
these coolers are totally able to handle this CPU. So I suggest anyone out there who's picking up a high quality 280 millimeter or 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler, tune those fans. Get off of that maximum RPM setting because you are just generating a whole lot of noise without a lot of results. All right, well, in the end, the 280EX and 360EX from Deepcool were basically equivalent. They traded wins. Overall, the 360EX was a little bit behind in the maximum RPM test because, frankly, it was a lot quieter at 55 decibels versus 58 decibels. So if you need to eke out just a little bit more thermal advantage, well, the 280EX is there for you. But overall, in the decibel normalized test, they were on par, really trading wins. And I think that's great news because it gives you a lot of flexibility. Choose the cooler that fits in your case. And that's actually gonna be more complicated than you might imagine, because a lot of cases specify that you can mount coolers up top that frankly don't fit that well. And likewise, you may find that the specs say you can mount a 360 or 280 in front, but it gets really crowded. Now, overall, more cases these days do allow you to front mount these big radiators. And that's a shame because I think that top mounting them is better. I couldn't do it in this case because the 360 wouldn't fit at all. And the 280 does fit, but I wanted to give you an apples to apples comparison. So I front mounted both of the radiators. Now I'm gonna link up right here, a video I previously did that does show that for overall system performance, you're gonna to wanna to top mount your radiator, even if the CPU runs a little bit hotter, your GPU and other thermals will be better. In terms of the two coolers, if you can put either one in your favored mounting position, well, go with the 280 because it's a little bit cheaper. And actually that's true of most coolers typically Across manufacturers, you spend 10 or $20 more for a 360, probably just based on the build and materials of that third fan. And that's despite the fact that two 140 millimeter fans are potentially equivalent, if not slightly better overall than 320 millimeter fans. And this just goes back to all the testing I've done on fans, both in cases and on coolers. You know, 140 millimeter fans are superior to 120 millimeter fans. So paying extra for three 120s versus two 140s, that doesn't make much sense to me. And I think the thermal benchmarks I've done here prove that. If you can fit a 280, save some money and go for a 280. Now, on the other hand, if you like the look of a 360 or that's the only thing you can fit in your case, that's gonna be just as good. And that means you have a lot of choices. So in the end, hey, I said Deep Cool was gonna be the winner. Yeah, Deep Cool's the winner, but ultimately you're the winner because you can choose from either of these two and you will find that they provide equivalent performance. And I assume this is gonna be true of most manufacturers where they do have the same pump and radiator design, the same overall fan design, even across sizes. So you can basically choose whichever fits in your case. Now, if you have any questions about this video, please post them down below. I'll be sure to get back to you. If you did enjoy it, do give me that like and subscribe. That helps me out a lot and gives me that incentive to do more videos like this in the future. And until next time, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru.